Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we find ourselves in Greenville, Ohio at the Garst Museum which is home to the National Annie Oakley Center. We're going to learn a little bit about her life and see what made this woman such a legend. Tag along! We're going to a place that you've never heard of before. It's There's a lot of fascinating exhibits here at the Garst Museum, but being in the same county as where Annie Oakley was born, it makes sense that she is the star attraction. And now we've reached the actual area that has all the Annie Oakley artifacts and tells us all about her life. Annie Oakley was born on August 13th, 1860. And while that name is what we all know the legend as today, she was actually born Phoebe Ann Moses. Her sisters called her Annie, presumably after her middle name Anne, and Oakley was the name of a nearby city when she was growing up, so her professional name became Annie Oakley. Something that probably doesn't come as a surprise for anybody is ever since childhood, Annie was a fantastic marksman. While her sisters may be playing with dolls and sewing, Annie always took interest in her father's hunting, and by about the age of eight, she began shooting for herself and showed what an extraordinary talent she had. What really skyrocketed Annie Oakley to fame was being part of Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show. Funny enough, when they first met, Buffalo Bill was very impressed with her marksman abilities, but he already had an expert marksman on his team, so he didn't want to hire and bring her on. Luckily for Annie, however, the marksman that was already part of the team had a bit of an incident later on with a steamboat and ended up losing all of his gear and having his equilibrium thrown off a bit. He ended up quitting the show, and then Annie was there to replace him. She quickly became wildly popular and tons of people flocked to the show specifically to see Annie Oakley. In fact, one of Oakley's biggest fans was the famous Chief Sitting Bull. In fact, he became so enamored of Annie that he insisted on adopting her and gave her a new Native American name which translated to Little Sure Shot. Her shooting skills were unparalleled, it seemed, and she impressed people not only across America, but all over the world. Annie performed for Queen Victoria at the American Exposition in London, and a few years later performed at the Paris Exposition, and then traveled to Italy and Spain, winning people over everywhere she went. During her shows, Annie would accomplish such feats as having four clay pigeons thrown up into the air and hitting all of them before they fell back down, or playing cards thrown up and she would be able to hit the smallest of targets on them. She also was extremely accomplished at shooting from a horse. She could actually stand on a horse with the horse running and she could still manage to hit her targets right on center. As the years went by, her talents only grew. Her signature trick became one where she would lay her gun down, throw her target balls in the air, and then pick up her gun and still manage to hit every single one of them. And her marksmanship became so great that you could throw a dime in the air and she'd still be able to nail it with her bullet. Shooting was her passion, and you could tell in every performance that she truly loved it. As a matter of fact, Annie even met her husband through shooting. His name was Frank Butler, and he was quite the accomplished marksman himself. Annie was still relatively young and new to the shooting competition scene when she was put up against Frank and ended up out shooting him by a single target. 
Frank was so impressed that he knew he had to get to know this woman better. A year later, they were married. Frank would stay with Annie for their entire lives, and he became a valuable part of her act, an assistant and true partner. Annie was so beloved that even now, she manages to be a huge figure in pop culture, and throughout the decades, there have been countless amounts of productions and other things celebrating her life. The most famous example of media that exists from Annie Oakley is probably Annie Get Your Gun. This story was a stage production in 1946, which told a slightly fictionalized version of Annie Oakley's life. In 1950, the story took the leap and became a full featured movie. When the movie began filming, Annie Oakley was actually played by one of the biggest stars of the time, Judy Garland. Unfortunately, she encountered health problems during the filming and had to bow out, but the movie still released as a huge success. This show is still performed by theaters all over the country, and Annie Oakley is still remembered as one of the true legends of the Wild West, and quite possibly one of the greatest marksmen to ever live. Though she was born well over 150 years ago, places like this museum just prove that she definitely still lives on in our hearts, and probably has more fans today than ever. Annie Oakley's fame is so large that in fact there was a book completely written about her dog, Dave. Dave was a setter that was adopted by Frank Butler, and he became their loving companion for almost an entire decade. After he passed away, they of course missed Dave very much, and Frank himself wrote an entire short story that soon became published in a little booklet that was all about this magnificent dog. Now, as I mentioned before, Frank and Annie stayed together for their entire lives after being married, and it was a fantastic partnership. They were always by each other's side, and not once did Frank become jealous of the fame that Annie accomplished. They were true partners, and he was there to support her every step along the way, and she the same for him. They were together and deeply in love for 50 years until Annie passed away in 1926 at the age of 66. 18 days later, Frank Butler would also pass away, quite possibly from a broken heart over losing the love of his life. What an incredible woman with such an incredible life. They've also told us that her grave is very close to here. So, I think it's only right that we go and pay our respects. And here, at Brock Cemetery in this nice, peaceful graveyard, we have Frank Butler and his wife, the one and only Annie Oakley. After an amazing life full of adventures, Annie finds her final resting spot in this beautiful cemetery not far from where her story began. And of course, as always, Frank is here by her side. May these two stay together for the rest of eternity. I think it's clear to see that Annie Oakley left her mark on the world and truly is a Wild West legend. Well, that's all the time we have for today. My name is David, and this has been Abnormal Voyages. Thanks for tagging along. We'll see you in the next one.